Proverbs chapter 23. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, somebody is in charge. Consider diligently what is before thee. Look at the table. Put a knife to thy throat. Self-discipline. If thou be a man given to appetite. If you eat a lot. Be not direst of his dainty. For they are deceitful meat. So, here's somebody in authority, and you're sitting down at their table. And Solomon put, why are you there? And you better be careful what you eat. You better practice self-discipline. And the food that is before you is deceitful, dainties. That's little, you know, pastries, that's little, you know... Food with little, you know, uh, wrappers and fancy, you know, colors. And and there's a table spread. But there's other motives of that guy having you there. You be careful. Why would a ruler want you to, to, to come and dine with him? And he's writing this to his son. Because look down at verse number 15. My son. Solomon's already in royalty. He's the king of Israel. And he says, if another ruler comes, my son, you better be very careful. Because you know what? He may be out to catch you. He may feed you and feed you and feed you. Then he'll put the hook in you. You know, you can fish all day. And worms after worms after worms, and boom, that one time you got the fish. Labor not to be rich. So if Solomon writes, labor not to be rich, don't gamble to be rich. Don't set thy ways of to be rich. Rich is not always cut out to be. Cease from thy own wisdom. Stop thinking you know it all and get counsel, get advice, get other authority. You don't know it all. Wilt thou set thy eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle towards heaven. I mean, have you ever seen the picture of a wallet or money with, with wings and they fly off? That comes out of the Bible. You know, my money says one thing. It says, bye. It comes out of a Bible. He says, when it comes to money, why reach out and get something that ain't going to do you no good? Ain't going to do you no bother. You know the most fanciest, expensive food ever ends up in the same place that toast ends up. Ends up in the in the toilet, in the outhouse, in the sewer. And a lot of times, some of the food just were very unhealthy for you. Things you buy, oh, whoopee do you just wasted money. Eat thou not the bread of him that has an evil eye. All right, we have a ruler, verses 1 through 3. Now here's a guy with an evil eye. It's, he's just wicked. Neither desire his dainty meat. Verse 3, he's got dainties, plural. This guy, he's got, you know, got the real fancy stuff. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he evil. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten, thou shalt vomit up and lose thy sweet words. This is the same thing that Paul teaches in Ephesians and 2 Thessalonians and 1 Corinthians 5. We're not to have fellowship with, 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 undark, uh, with, with 
darkness. We're not to go fellowship with the world. We're not to be bothered with worldly wicked people. And yet I'm going to say it. We say bring that evil wicked people into the church house. The problem is says no. Don't eat at the table of a man that's evil. Especially when he's got an evil eye towards you because that meal is more than a meal. It's something else to put a hook in you. Speak not in the ears of a fool. For he will despise the wisdom of thy words. A fool will not listen. And I've dealt with many fools and anybody who has any public ministry. They're not going to listen. Why do you do it? We're there for other people. Why don't you just, you know, give up the farmer's market? Because we meet new people that we've never seen before. Well, what about that guy over there, that vendor over He don't like it. I pray for his soul. I pray for his family. But I'm there for him. But, you know, if he listens, he listens. But if he don't, once he's still a fool, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. So you can talk to an atheist around and around and around and around and around and around. You can let your light shine. You can let your salt and all that. The guy's a fool. He's not going to listen. Move on. Remove not the old landmark. And we saw that in verse 28 of 20, chapter 22. Remove not the ancient landmark. Those marks in the land of Israel. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about anywhere else but Israel, king of, of Judah. Those old landmarks were set forth in the book of Judge, uh, Joshua. Israel's not to break them. Ezekiel has set forth the landmarks of the of the millennial land under Jesus Christ. Don't move them. Enter not into the fields of the fatherless. That's to dispossess. That's to take advantage of. That's a, in the domain. That's, you know, go in there and, and take all his crops, take whatever he had. Because, because we saw that yesterday, uh, verse 22. Rob not the poor because he's poor. Well, he, he can't do no. He ain't got no father. He ain't got, so we're just going to go in there and do whatever we want to do. The Bible says no. God, because God is watching. For their Redeemer, the fatherless, is mighty and shall plead their cause with thee. You go and afflict the fatherless, the widows, the poor. You wait till God comes calling the day of reckoning. And I guess say, well, you know, I know this rich man, I know this friend, you know, he died, he died fair and all that. Death ain't it. Then there's judgment. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Saved or lost. Judgment seat of Christ and in the great white throne judgment, God is going to settle the accounts. Right will be made right and wrong will be made wrong. All injustice will be made just. All secret things will be revealed. You better repent and get right with God now and put it under the blood. Apply thy heart unto instruction and thy ears unto words of knowledge. Plain and simple. The word of God. Withhold not correction from the child. For thou beatest him with a rod. Ye shall not die. He shall not die. Oh, you know, if you beat the kid there. All right, there are cases where there have been children who have been beaten to death and beaten beyond recognition. That's not what Solomon's talking about. 
He's talking about child abuse. He's talking about a parent that loves their child is not going to punish that child more than what the Bible says to punish. They're going to back off. The tears are going to make them stop. Their love is going to be, all right, I give, and they did not get enough. Because we've already read a verse in Proverbs, you know, let that, the tears, you know, hinder you. A loving parent is not going to beat that child senseless. He's going to beat that child not senseless yet. Not enough. Because he loves that child. Well, what about the, the you know the kids that they weren't loved? We're not talking about that. They're not saved. They don't go by the Bible and they're not written in the names of the Lamb's Book of Life. They're just living ungodly, unworldly like you've been teaching them in the public school system. Why are you trying to represent with me as a Bible believer? Don't pawn off the devil's children on me the way you raised the devil's children to be evil and wicked. Don't bring them into the world of the Bible and God, godly family. You're the one who raised the devil's children the devil's way in the public school system. Don't you dare bring your devil's way into a Bible-believing Christian family that loves God and loves to do right and loves their children. You don't want to crack out there. You want to give him a little kiss on the forehead and all that. The Bible says use the rod. The Bible says if you love me, you'll love your children. If you love me, you'll love your wife. I'm talking about family. I'm not talking about correction. I'm just saying you will love your family. You won't discipline that child too long. Look what he said. Thou shalt beat him with a rod. You don't slap him. You don't get a belt. A rod. It doesn't say... It doesn't say belt. Pain is for learning. Pain is for medical healing. Thou shalt beat him with a rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. So why are all the children hell-bound sinners, wicked, and don't listen to God? Well, that you... Brought them outside with the word of God. My son, and we're back to Solomon writing to his children. Rehoboam and God writing to us. If thy heart be wise, my heart, the father's heart, shall rejoice. Even mine. Listen, if you're a wise son, man, I am, I am happy. Well done. This is my beloved son, who I am well pleased. Hear ye him. That comes from Proverbs 23, 15. Yea, my reign shall rejoice. That what, that's what keeps me. Shall rejoice. And when thy lips speak right things. That's, my son is doing right. My child is doing right. I am a happy father. Let not thy heart envy sinners. Get away from envy. Envy is a, is, a, is a weed that has a deep root that is hard to unroot once you get it. And it usually gets worse and worse. I had envy one time. And it, it was just, I don't have it anymore, but it, that was a difficult battle in prayer. And don't envy. See Psalm 73, 1 through 6 and 11 through 17 about envy. Be, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. So instead of envy, replace envy with the fear of God. Well, what about that? Oh, wait a minute. No, let me worry about what God will do to me if I sin. What about that? No, no, no. Let me worry about me and God. How am I walking with God? Never mind how he's walking. With or without God. All the day long. For surely there is an end. And thy expectation shall not be cut off if you fear the Lord. Hey, I got a blessed hope coming one day. And if I keep serving the Lord and I keep fearing the Lord, one day the Lord's going to come, whether I'm going to die, be absent from the body and present with the Lord, or if I live to see the rapture. If I stay fearing the Lord, but hey, glory to God. 
But if I backslide and I go against God and I go after the world and I go after the flesh and I go after the way of sinner, the day I see Christ, I, I'm not going to lose my soul, but I'm going to have a little fear ap after I see him. Okay, what's he going to be upset with me about? Better fear the Lord now before you die than fear the Lord after you die. And we're going to stop right there.